For our section on energy and change, we are going to do cells and batteries. Torch batteries store energy. Have you ever used a torch that runs on batteries? You need batteries to make a torch bulb light up. There is energy in the batteries. It is called chemical energy. The energy in the batteries is transferred to the torch bulb. The torch bulb gives off light energy and heat energy. We are going to learn about how a torch works. Discuss how a torch works. Why does a torch give off light when you switch it on? Why does a torch stop shining when you switch it off? What happens to the energy in the batteries when you switch the torch on? What happens to the energy in the batteries when you switch the torch off? The torch batteries store energy. When you switch the torch, switch on the torch, the energy stored in the batteries is transferred to the bulb. The bulb gives off light and shines as long as it gets energy from the batteries. The bulb stops shining when the stored energy in the batteries is used up. Here's an explanation for the word batteries. Battery is two or more cells joined together. We are going to learn more about this just now. Have you ever wondered what happens when you flip a switch to turn on a torch? You are completing an electric circuit, allowing a current or a flow of electrons through the wires. What does this mean? If you look at this diagram, this one here is when the switch is off. That means it is an incomplete circuit. Once you close the switch, so it becomes a complete circuit, then electricity starts flowing and the bulb will light up. So, the complete circuit, the light bulb will shine. Incomplete circuit when the switch is open, the bulb will not light up. When you close the switch, you complete the circuit and electricity will flow through the circuit and the bulb in the torch will light up. Let us learn the difference between batteries and cells. In everyday life, we talk about batteries. In science, we call them cells. So in science, one battery is a number of cells joined together. Let us look at this one here. This torch has a battery made up of two cells. There's one cell and two cells. Electrical energy is transferred in a circuit. Electricity is a type of energy. For electricity to flow, it needs a continuous path. We call the path that electricity flows along an electrical circuit. An electrical circuit transfers electrical energy from its source to where it is needed. An electric circuit must always have these three paths. The source of energy, the path for the electric current to move, and the use for the electrical energy. So the source of energy would be your cell or your battery. The path would be your metal wires. And the use for the electrical energy would be your light bulb or a buzzer if you're using one. Look at the drawing of the electrical circuit in a torch. The arrows show the movement of the electrical energy. So there the complete circuit and the electricity will flow. Okay, so what are cells? 
devices that change stored energy into electrical energy or chemical energy into electrical energy. What is an electrical circuit? A continuous path through which electricity flows. It transfers electrical energy from its source to where it is needed. And cells are devices that change stored energy into electrical energy. Now, we are going to learn about the parts of an electrical circuit. So let's do the definitions and then we'll go to each one. What are components? Components are several parts together that make up something, or we should rather say that components are parts that make up an electrical circuit. What is a terminal? It's a positive or negative end of a cell that you join to the connecting wires in an electrical circuit. What is voltage? The amount of electrical energy that can flow from a source of electricity. We measure voltage, its units called volts. And what is insulate? To cover or protect something with a material that stops electricity from getting in or out. Let us learn about the different components of an electrical circuit. Parts of an electric circuit. Electrical circuits are made up of a number of parts called components. For electricity to flow through a circuit, all of the components must be connected to each other. That means the circuit must be complete. These pictures show some of the components that you can use to make electrical circuits. What are they? So the first one is your cell, which is a source of electricity or source of energy in your circuit. Then you get your switch and your bulb holder. That's your bulb holder. And that is your bulb. That is your metal wire. And this would be your insulation tape. So the cell or the battery is a source of energy in a circuit. The battery has a positive end or terminal marked plus. The other end is a negative end or terminal marked minus. Battery is marked with its voltage. What is voltage? Voltage is the amount of electrical energy that can flow from a source of electricity. Most small batteries or cells are marked with 1,5 volts. The number of volts tells us how much electricity can flow from the battery. The electricity flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. The bulb. What is the function of the bulb? The bulb is a part of a circuit that uses the electrical energy to make light. The metal wire. Metals such as copper allow electricity to flow easily because they are good conductors. The metal wires join the components of the circuit to each other. The insulation tape or masking tape is used to attach the wire to the other components. They insulate the wires to stop energy from being wasted. These are all the parts of an electrical circuit which are called components. A bulb holder is used to keep a bulb upright in a circuit and a switch is used to complete or break a circuit. This is what we have learned today about cells and batteries.